Good morning, everybody. Coach RJ here. We provide fun, exciting, entertaining workouts in a family-like environment. And most importantly, we get results. So how many of us right now would say that we're busting our butt so that we can achieve our goals, but we can't walk down the stairs? Now, we all want results, but we want to feel this level of soreness. And we know that we need rest. But who really wants to take a day off? So today, I want to give you my five tips on how to become less sore, okay? So let's start from the top here. So sore equals sexy. And I actually stand behind that statement. Uh, you don't necessarily have to be broken to get results. But when you're sore, you know that you're working the muscles. And when the muscles get sore, that means that they're being pushed beyond the levels of that they're normally used to. And in order to get results, you need to do something that you've never done before. And so you have to achieve those goals. And if you're sore, hey, you know, we want that level of soreness. Now, how do we bring it down a notch? Okay. So number one, I want you to focus on hydration. So the last challenges that we did, we challenged everybody to drink three liters of water. Now, two liters of water is what research is showing is a great number for females in and around 170 pounds and under. And for males, in and around like 150 and up is anywhere from two and a half to three liters. Now you factor in the, the, that you're working out, you factor in that you're probably eating a little bit more calories as you should. You wanna have a caloric deficit to lose weight and fat, but you don't wanna be down that low, okay? And then you gotta factor in that you're building more muscle. And anytime that you require and build more muscle, muscle has 70% water, right? Fat has virtually little water in it. And so as you put on more, more muscle, you're going to require more hydration. Now, what does that mean? The other thing is that when you're hydrated with lots of water, it allows fluid between the muscles, right? So when you're lifting muscle, there's a shearing action happening between your muscles. And the more fluid you have, the less friction there is between the muscles and the faster you recover. So how much water should you be drinking? Well, I would say that for for the majority of everybody, three liters would be the minimum amount of water that you should be drinking on a daily basis. The second one is protein, okay? And a lot of us struggle getting the protein in us. And all you got to do is Google different, different sources of protein, high protein recipes. We've done videos on them. My suggestion to everybody is that you have two shakes a day minimum, like regardless of what you're doing, two shakes a day. And then try and get for, for females, three, six ounces of protein, whether that be tempeh, tofu, whether that be chicken breast, steak, or lean ground turkey, that's up to you, okay? Uh, for males, I would say that you want to do two protein shakes, and then you want to get anywhere from eight to 10 ounces, so three, eight to 10 ounces of, of servings of protein. The reason why you require protein is because protein is the building block to muscle. So it's basically like if you were to stack bricks, it's the glue between the bricks, right? So it allows protein synthesis. It allows your muscles to repair and rebuild, okay? So you gotta fuel up with the adequate amounts of protein. Then number three is my favorite supplement that I discovered this year that I needed because of the higher demand. So now, when, when rewind to a year and a half ago, and uh, before we started doing the virtual trainings, I was probably doing three to four classes per week. I wasn't coaching on the blue and uh, we definitely weren't doing the high intensity virtual trainings and getting 10,000 steps a day. And so I needed something that had everything in it, right? Like I don't want to take a thousand pills, right? I've done tons of research on a lot of the ingredients that sit within the tissue rejuvenation and they're all great, except I didn't want to buy, you know, I didn't want to buy turmeric. I didn't want to buy glucosamine. I didn't want to buy chondroitin. I didn't want to buy MSN. I didn't want to buy collagen, right? Like those are the, those are the five, the, the, the five bigs that are in that tissue rejuvenation. And so this supplement came about and ever since I've been taking, it, it's been night and day. And you can ask Jen about how her hamstring is healing. Okay. Now when it comes to taking tissue rejuvenation, it's an anti-inflammatory. So it's going to bring down the amount of swelling that are within the muscles to allow it to heal. Number two is it's got uh, like joint health stuff, okay? I'm going to keep it simple like that. Basically, it adds fluid and repairs specifically in your joints and tendons.
Okay, like protein is great for your muscles, whereas the, the ingredients that are in tissue rejuvenation actually work into the joint themselves. Okay, so that's number two. And then number three is the collagen, right? Like collagen is the new big thing that a lot of people are taking for anti-aging, right? So what it, what it does, it works on the skin. So it's, it repairs within the skin. It makes it smoother, makes it look younger. I mean, that's just, that alone should entice you to start tissue rejuvenation. And the way that you would take it is start off with two at night, right? Before you go to bed, this way it's in your body, it's working, you're not moving, you're not going to you know, drink a ton of water and piss it out. It's the best time to take it. Uh, as you get after your second week, I would suggest that you take it after every workout. So we did a challenge and we said every 30 minutes of activity is considered a workout. So if you go for and, and get 10,000 steps that day, I would suggest to take two. If you did a fit club workout and you went all out, and then I would suggest to take two. If you, uh, and then at the end of the night, you would take two. So for me on, on days where I'm like really, really working out, let's say I do two virtuals in person and coaching, then I would, I would take six that day. So six is kind of where I max out. Two is the very minimum and stretching, right? Stretching is key. I think everybody's adopted stretching. As you can see, Dale's in the back here, just chilling out, stretching. <laughs> so stretching is another key element that you want to do. Uh, and my suggestion is that number one, you get a good warm up in, right? Like you can't go 110% if you didn't at least go 80 prior to that movement. And if you go right into, uh, you know, hop squats and you're going all out, you're getting 30, 40 reps in 30 seconds. That's a lot of explosive movement. And so we have warm ups written on the board. And when we run classes, we do a warm up, take them serious, get there, be ready, and uh, just get your body moving. I know it's, not, it's boring to do you know, shoulder rotations, hand to foot, jumping jacks, right? Like you just want, you just want to work out, right? And I get it. I'm the same way, but honestly, it's like, think about your muscles, like pasta noodles. Okay. So pasta noodles, when you get them, they're, they're hard, they're cold, they're brittle. Your muscles are, are very similar. Okay. They're maybe not as cold and hard or brittle, brittle as that, but they're pretty damn close. And so when you do a warm up, think about what happens to that spaghetti strand. It becomes pliable, it becomes flexible, it becomes mobile. And that's exactly what you want to do when you, when you, the reason why you're warming up. So stretch, warm up before, stretch after when the tissues are the most pliable. And honestly, either stretch first thing in the morning or stretch before you go to bed and on those key areas. So like your knees, your pecs, right? Like that's what I would say is like a glute stretch, a quad stretch, knee stretch, like where you sit on the knees and then a pec stretch. And in the morning, again, same thing, just get the tissue mobile first thing because it's been sitting for a long time. So how often should you stretch? Three minutes when you first wake up, even two minutes when you first wake up, two minute warm up, two minute stretch after, two minute before you go to bed. That's eight minutes, right? No problem, you got it. And then last but not least, workout, right? Uh, honestly, I would say one of the best cure for sore muscles is another workout. It's just like, if you're super hungover, what should you do? You should have another drink. Maybe don't go and, you know, guzzle a tw 20 ounce bottle of vodka, but when it comes to your muscles, movement is key, right? Like even when I had my knee fracture, so my knee was completely immobile. The best thing that I could have done, and it's recommended by all the great doctors and physios, remember great doctors and physios is that you want to be able to mobilize the tissue, right? Even if it's me, massaging the tissue or just slightly bending my leg, right? That blood flow, right? If you're bedridden, what are the things that they're going to do with you? Well, they're going to make sure that you're obviously breathing and taking in proper fluids, but they're going to be mo moving you, right? Because you're going to get bed sores. Like things are going to start to seize up. They're, if you don't use it, you lose it. Okay. So I don't say that you, if you're really sore, that you go uh, do another workout on 110% and injure yourself, right? I'm saying that if you're really sore, that you can go through the motions, right? So like a virtual, instead of using, um, you know, instead of using your 12 pounders, you go to like either no weight or like two pounds. You see the difference, right? If you normally come on the blue and you normally kettlebell squat 80 pounds, legit go 40, right? Or if you're really sore, do nothing, just go through the motion and nobody's gonna judge you for that. You didn't waste a workout. A, 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 any workout is a good workout. The only bad workout you have is the one you don't do. 
So my 100% suggestion is that you get in there and you get another workout. So that's it, guys. Boom, big knowledge base. Boom, I hope you got a lot out of this. So if you're feeling me, give me a fist pound and I want you to say sore equals sexy.